I think it's really cool when people try to preserve the memory of their grandmother or their grandfather through plants. One of the things that I hear a lot is somebody's grandmother will pass away or the grandfather and they remember a particular rose bush or a hydrangea or something similar that was planted out in front of their grandparents home and they remember it from their childhood growing there for years and their grandma or their grandpa took really good care of it and it's something that they'll always remember them by. So usually people want to dig that plant up or somehow preserve it so that they can bring it to their own home and have that memory of their grandparents, which I think is just really, really neat. Well, one of the really neat things about plant propagation is you can do that without digging up the parent plant and disturbing all of the soil. You can preserve an exact clone of the plant that you're wanting to bring to your place. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. Now I know on this channel we already do a lot of plant propagation and I've gotten a lot of questions about one video in particular and that's the hydrangea video. It seems to be a popular one that a lot of people like so we're going to take a cutting. We're going to pretend that we have a hydrangea plant from my grandmother's place and we're going to take a cutting, walk you guys through the steps again this year and show you how to preserve that plant for future genetics and future generations to come for your own family. So let's get started. So if you guys remember that last video about propagating hydrangeas, the one that I took cuttings of down in Oregon, I'll put a link up to it right here. You'll remember that I took those cuttings and then they grew on through the fall and into the winter. I potted them up this spring and here is the result. We've got these beautiful pink hydrangeas, which I was hoping for blue, but now we know how to get those. Uh, there is the flower, there's the hydrangea. I've got another one that doesn't have a flower bud on it, same exact variety, and you can see this sucker is just growing beautifully. Now this was just a cutting last year from that nursery in Oregon. Look at the size of these leaves. I mean, it's just growing so fantastically. And then you can see right here, there's roots just growing on right through the bottom of the uh, pot here. So. It's just a beautiful specimen of a hydrangea. And what we're going to do, because this doesn't have a flower on it, we're going to come right here and just take a cutting. Heck, I might even get two cuttings. Just snip it right off, and we're going to take some cuttings and stick them and get these guys to grow on. We're going to pretend like this is my grandmother, my great-grandmother's hydrangea. And... Uh, Heck, my great-great-grandmother's hydrangea, and this thing is special. I've only got one chance to make this happen, and we're going to take cuttings. We're going to preserve the genetics, and I'm going to show you guys how easy this is step-by-step. Step. All right, guys, I scoured the house, and the only tote I've got available is this one with a blue tint to it, but it doesn't matter. As long as it lets light in, we should be just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. It's nice and deep, which I really like. Um, plenty of airflow up top. Then we're going to use these little cups again so we can actually see the roots growing without disturbing the plant because a lot of people are saying, Mike, it drives me nuts when you pull them little root rooted cuttings out of there and just tear the roots up. So we're not going to do that. Uh, what I do is just get these little cups, and I've showed you this before in that fig video. I just get these little plastic Dixie cups and then use some good scissors and just snip holes right in the bottom of it. Go 180 degrees, snip another hole. And then you've got good drainage through that cup there. And you've got something that you can see the roots actually growing in, so make sure to get the clear. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these, and then we'll get some potting soil in there. All right, so I got my cups of potting soil ready. Doesn't matter what you use as long as it drains well, but holds some moisture. I happen to have some cow manure slash wood shavings that I get from a local dairy. Doesn't matter what you use. All right, guys, I got a quick little tip for you before you start taking cuttings. Make sure you go out the night before you're going to take the cuttings and water the plant really, really well. You want to do that so that the plant can uptake as much water as possible and those cuttings will be full of moisture and turgid and be able to go into their little cutting area 
with the best potential possible for actually staying alive and rooting. If you take cuttings of a wilted plant or a plant that's dehydrated, been in the sun for a while, you might have a hard time rooting that cutting because it's trying to survive on its own without roots. So make sure you're able to water it really well the night before you take the cuttings and then take them first thing in the morning so that plant's got tons of moisture. All right, so I've got my plant here and we're gonna pretend this is my great, great grandmother's plant and it's down to crunch time and she just passed away the house went up on auction and it's gonna sell and we only have one chance to get these cuttings and preserve these genetics for our future generations so I'm at the plant it's been watered really well the night before I snuck into the place and watered it no I'm just kidding but anyways we've got our plant here I've got my cuttings and I'm just gonna go down here right below a node in fact let's get that a little closer I know we've done this before but just to walk you through it right below a leaf node and we're gonna snip that guy off and that's gonna be a cutting and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here I've got two nice cuttings that we'll be able to get off of this plant that's a little bit rubbery up there so I may come down a little further let's see and snip him off right here alright so I got my two cuttings here and you'll notice this this will work for cutting material but it's a little rubbery so I like to come down where the woods a little more firm we're actually in the middle of August same time I did that last hydrangea video I like to take hydrangeas you can take them earlier in the summer but I really like to take them closer to uh, August time frame late July August is a good time to take these because they're nice and turgid and strong they're more of a semi hardwood and they can stand up better and they root really well this time of year so I've got my cuttings and I went ahead and found another plant same variety and I took two more cuttings so we're gonna do four total cuttings of these guys so to prepare this I'm just gonna strip these bottom leaves off here so those are gone and then you notice I, I did this right below a leaf node you've got um, new buds coming out that's where a bigger proportion of the undifferentiated cells are located that can turn into roots so I like to take the cuttings right below a leaf node then I'm gonna come up and we're just gonna snip a little over half of this leaf off we've actually got a pretty good size cutting I could probably get well, maybe get two of them out of there but I'm just gonna stick with the one I think and this will be perfect I'm gonna go ahead and snip this guy off right here that top grows a little bit more uh, soft so now I've got just a beautiful cutting here and it's gonna it's gonna be strong it's well uh, it's Geez, chickens, it's really hydrated. It's got some nice, good uh, little solar panels here to collect plenty of light and form good roots here. We're gonna dip this into the rooting hormone. Get that out now. And as you guys know, I use Hormidin 3 only because that's what I use for rhododendrons. You can use any rooting hormone for these guys and they should root pretty readily. And then we'll just dip this in. Normally I wouldn't uh, dip these cuttings into the jar of rooting hormone but uh, I pour some out into another little jar but there's hardly anything left in the bottom of this and I've just been using it for little odds and ends so now we've got the rooting hormone on there we're gonna get our little cup stick it right down in I know some people like to dibble the end the into the rooting medium but it's not necessary with these tough cuttings it doesn't brush off enough of the hormone to really matter that much and it'll be just fine and root really well. In fact, you might be able to get these guys to root without the rooting hormone, but this is our great-great-grandmother's hydrangea, right? And we want to make sure that it roots. So there it is in its cup, and we'll be able to see once the roots start forming how well they're forming in there. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these guys done and then show you what we do. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and water these guys. Now, my rooting medium was pretty dry. I mean, there's a little moisture in there, so I, I want to let some water run through these guys for a sec. I'm going to turn this on real low, and we're going to water these in. You always want to make sure to water them in. I packed them down tight. Um, you want all of that medium to have a, or the roots to have a surface to grab hold of. So you want them kind of packed in tight, and then I want to water these guys in fairly well. And like I've said before, 
you don't want them soaking wet in the box in the propagation frame you want them to just be moist so I'm just gonna let all of this drain out and you saw I cut the holes there in the cups before so they'll drain really well uh, you can see that rooting medium just drains right through but it'll hold plenty of moisture for this purpose all right guys so we're ready to put these in our tote I'm gonna grab each of these cuttings and we're just gonna place them right down in the bottom of the tote here all right so we've got them all in there and there's plenty of moisture I'm even going to show you this is exactly what I'm going to do now a lot of people wonder if I water these cuttings as I go through the weeks and all I'm going to do is put this lid on now this lid doesn't seal like the lid that I have the Ziploc lid that has the uh, little gasket around the edge but it should still be just fine. I'll keep an eye on them. If, they're, if they need a little bit of water, if things are drying out, I'll put a little water in here. But other than that, you just put the lid on and you're good to go. You're golden. You don't have to worry about anything. Eventually here, we'll see some mist start forming on the inside of this container. And there's plenty enough water to circulate in there and keep these cuttings turgid and moist and able to survive until they root. All right, guys, so as usual, we're going to place this on the north side of a building or anywhere that there's lots of overhead light, but no direct sun because direct sun will cook these cuttings. So you do not want direct sun hitting this tote at all. And I'm going to take this lid off one last time just to show you how much water's down in there. A little bit of the water is drained through the pots, but that's it. That's all we're going to do. We're going to seal the lid here. I'm going to slide this guy back up against the frame here or the the barn here and that's it we're just going to leave them there and the humidity and mist will build up in there just like it has on this tote here and these guys will be good to go in another month maybe six weeks we should have lots of roots growing right through all of those cups i'll come back out and show you what we're up to all right guys, so we're gonna change gears here for a sec. So just so you know, first of all, the last clips that you were watching were taken, I think it was August 17th. So it's been like five, six weeks, almost a month and a half. And you know, a lot of time's gone by. It's today, it's kind of rainy, it's cool. Summer's over, fall's coming on. And Johnny's active today. I just got another comment this morning. I've been getting a lot of comments about people who are trying to propagate the hydrangeas. I know I was shooting this clip about just propagation in general, but I thought this would be a great opportunity to take and show you guys my hydrangea cuttings right now. I might just tear them up and look at the roots and show you what's going on, just so you guys see what's happening. So I got a question this morning, and I've been getting this question. I think it's because everybody's wanting to propagate hydrangeas right now um, because it's a good time to propagate them, or it was. That's kind of the time I propagated them last year for that video. So the question is, why are my hydrangea leaves, the cuttings leaves, turning brown? Why are they all falling off? Are they dead? Are they alive? What's going on, Mike? And I want to show you my cuttings right now and we'll see, are they the same? Is this what you're talking about? All right. So here are my hydrangea cuttings that I showed you in the last clip there. It's been a month and a half, something like that. And here is a good example of what I've got going on. So, my hydrangea cuttings are turning colors. You can see the leaves are kind of turning a brown, some people might say, but they're not necessarily a brown. They're kind of a, a reddish purplish color. I don't know if you guys can see that or if it's if it's coming out at all in the in the video here, but I'll show you another one here just so you can see. All right. So here's another one. It looks like it's getting close to falling off almost. Let's see if I can show you that guy. There we go. It's starting to focus. It's starting to turn kind of a reddish color. Now, this time last year, I had actual leaves falling off of them. And so if you're talking about brown hydrangea leaves, is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about drying up and shriveling up and falling off? If that's happening, it could be a problem with moisture. You probably don't have enough moisture in your propagation tote. 
um, if it looks like this, this is completely natural. This is what this is what nature does, guys. These are a deciduous plant, and we're actually getting into fall time here, and so all the leaves are starting to fall off anyway, and that's what these things are going to do naturally, uh, even even though their cuttings are not out on a plant. They're going to start falling off. The leaves will fall off. And so, but I want to show you that down below, we are getting roots on these guys. They're doing very well. Now, it's taking a little bit longer now because of the fact that, you know, we're, we took these cuttings later in the year, and it's kind of cool right now. If, if you wanted a higher success rate or a higher, um, you want to ensure more success for yourself, you know, I took these August 17th, I believe. If you want a higher chance of success, you would probably be better off taking them in July. Um, this is just when I was on vacation. It was a good time to take them, so I took them. And we're getting roots. But I want to show you back on track here. Let's get back on track because I want to show you, first of all, to answer the question about all of the brown leaves. Hopefully that's what you're talking about. If it is, there's nothing wrong with your cuttings. Leave them be. Quit worrying about them. Um, but to get back on track, we're propagating our great-great-great-grandmother's hydrangea so that we can pass on the genes for years and years to come, right? So let's show you that these guys really are rooting, even though they're starting to turn colors. All right, and we're going to be able to preserve those genes, right? So let's pull this guy out. Oh, man, look at that. Absolutely nothing. Well, you know, better luck next time. Let's not get too bent out of shape about it. Let's just pull another one up. All right. Ooh, we got roots, guys. <clears throat> and I know this may not be good for them. A lot of people are going to say, Mike, what are you doing, man? You're killing your cuttings. But I'm doing this for you guys. I'm doing this so that you can see exactly what's going on. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Come on, buddy, focus. Do you see all them little rootlets coming out of there? They're all starting to shoot on out of that uh shoot on out of that propagate or out of that uh little stem there now i can talk see um anyway lots of little roots millions of little roots well not millions but tons of little roots shooting right out of there and this guy is going to go on to make a beautiful plant now we're getting into a cooler time of year and these ones are taking a little bit longer to root i just kind of took them later in the year and I probably should have taken them in, you know, first of August or even in July to ensure that I got good success rate. But, uh, you know, I took them when I took them. So they're, they're rooting as well as they're going to root right now. Um, and as I'm feeling that material, even though I've left this tote lid on, it, it feels a little bit slightly dry. So I could actually go and water these guys and tell you the truth, even though there's not a lot of roots on that guy, I could probably just take it out of the toe or actually a better way would be to just crack the lid of the toe and slowly acclimate them to less humidity. So just turn it sideways and leave it slightly cracked. Let's see, so leave, leave this tote slightly cracked like that so that you can let some air in there do that for a week and then take them out and because they've got little rootlets on there they would actually probably start growing and do just fine and make nice plants but i'd be able to water the cups better and get some moisture in there and the roots would probably take off just fine but we are headed into winter so um they're not going to do a whole lot of growing now let's look at another one <clears throat> just to see what we got all right i know this kills you guys it kills me too but i want to show you more roots see that more roots. This guy's going to be just fine. Let's just pull up the last one. What the heck? It doesn't matter to me if these guys don't make it. Or was that? That was the one I already pulled up, I think. Or maybe not. Anyway, you saw, you saw the roots on some of those guys, and they're forming just fine. So this time of year, going into winter, I would probably place that uh, whole box, I would probably crack the lid a little bit, water them real well to get the, some moisture in there, and then place them on maybe a heating mat, like over here. I don't have anything on this heating mat right now, and so, well, I've got that on the heating mat, another experiment, but, um, 
I, uh, I could probably place them on this heating mat and just turn it on for a few weeks and get those roots growing before winter time. All right, guys, so I just decided to go ahead and do it and show you what it looks like. So I took those cuttings out, and because I pulled them out and showed you the roots, it kind of upsets them a little bit and maybe sets them back a little, but that's okay. This is all to show you guys how to do this and what to do and what it looks like so you can see for yourself. If I would have propagated those plants two weeks earlier, um, or like I said, the last week of July, they would have massive amounts of roots just filling out that cup right now. But I did take them a little bit later in the year. Uh, but because of that, we're headed into deep fall here pretty soon, and it's going to be getting cooler and cooler, and those roots are going to stop growing. Plus, the light's getting less and less, so it's just encouraging the plant to start going to its winter slumber. Um, but I can encourage more root growth for a few more weeks now, or even a month now, before it goes into winter by putting those guys on bottom heat. So you can see we got the heat mat here. I just moved aside these boards because I want the heat to float up right through here. If I, if I had this tote closed, I would probably prop this up on these boards. But because I have it open, I want that heat to just drift right up through the cups here into the medium. And then the cool thing about this is what I'll do now, since I know they're getting little bits of roots, is just leave the lid cracked a little bit. They don't need that much humidity anymore. They'll, and what I found, another thing that I found with plant propagation is that when you actually have a situation where you've got, where you've got cuttings that have more exposure to air and less humidity, it almost encourages them to want to form roots faster because they they don't have much time it's it's weird it's almost like they know it they don't have much time and they need to either have roots or die and uh i've noticed that when when cuttings when they start getting some callus formed i wouldn't do that in the beginning but when they get some callus built up or they get little little tiny rootlets coming out like that you start lessening the humidity and forcing them to grow up and be little adult plants it kind of forces them to grow more roots break out into the world and <laughs> become adults and grow more roots and so that's what we're going to do uh we'll see what happens these guys have had plenty of time in here they're either going to root or they're not and i've disturbed them quite a bit now so we'll see if they're gonna but um i'm pretty excited about these little guys i love this hydrangea and i love the colors of the flower but i think we're going to be okay we got some bottom heat going i think they'll be able to flush out with some root growth we'll check back in on these guys later and see what happens um if you're talking about leaves turning brown that's what mine are doing i hope that's what you're talking about if it is there's nothing wrong with them uh, if they're turning brown and drying up and shriveling then there's probably not enough moisture in your frame um, but don't overwater. <laughs> but uh, so so what I'm going to do, like I said, is just kind of put the lid on, leave it cracked, because I want all the heat to drift out through here. I don't want any heat around the cuttings. I want the heat in the medium. So we'll see what happens. We'll come back and check in on this guy later. Well, I guess I better get out here and give you guys an update. So we've already had some freezing weather here, but because we place these hydrangeas on this heating mat and have them in this little tote, it created a beautiful environment where all of the heat from the heating mat was rising up through the cups, warming the soil. They're staying warm. There's some airflow coming through here, so the humidity is cut way back. These guys have got roots on their own. You can see the leaves are still green. We're actually a couple weeks after that last shot. Let's take a look and see how these guys are rooting with the bottom heat and the lid cracked open. All right, guys, so don't get mad at me. This is for you. So I'm going to grab this guy. This is the biggest, nicest one right here. I'm probably not going to destroy all these guys because I really don't. I, you know, I want to keep these. I love these things. I, I wanted to get a few more of these hydrangeas rooted. And so... <laughs> Right on time, Johnny. And so I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pull this guy up. We're gonna put him right, right back real quick so that we can make sure to preserve it and not hurt it at all. I don't see any roots coming out to the outside edge. And I have a feeling it's because we're just getting later in the year. And I have a feeling that the, the plant is not putting on as much growth because 
not because it doesn't have enough warmth where obviously you can see those leaves aren't dying back we've already had freezing temps those leaves should already be falling off by now but because it's in a warm environment they're still holding strong but the sun is getting less and less every day and plants really respond to light and so because we don't have as much light going on these guys the growth on it even though we've got some warmth the growth on it has really really slowed down if this was in the middle of summer those roots would just be all strong strangling around in there and just twisting all over the inside of this cup and you'd see them all over going like crazy but anyway doesn't matter our point was we were trying to propagate this guy for you know preserving it for next year and then the springtime it'll shoot off and put on tons of new growth so without further ado let's take a look at this guy I'm gonna pull it up don't get mad at me I know you guys don't like this but gosh it's so fun to look at oh look at that our little warm environment, our little, here, let's put this cup down. Our little warm environment worked out and you saw it before. It just had some, it just had some, uh, here, let me go, uh, let me go wash this guy off real quick. All right, guys, so I went over here with the hose and, you know, I, I shouldn't have done this. If, if I was really concerned about keeping this particular hydrangea, I would absolutely not have done that because I may have damaged it beyond return here, <laughs> especially going into the winter. But um, you can see that that bottom heat, just putting them on the bottom heat, you know, you know, if you saw before when when in the in the, earlier in this video, we had just had some callus and then there were little tiny rootlets just coming out, right? And we decided, okay, it's getting into winter and if I wouldn't have done anything with the bottom heat, this guy would have stopped right there and it might have taken off in the springtime, but you know, it may not have. It didn't really have any roots going on, just tiny little guys. And so I want to get some root growth before winter, put it on the bottom heat and that's what it did. You can see that it's it's formed some nice little roots coming on there, but because of the light and because we're headed into winter, uh, you know, it's just not going to put on a ton of massive growth really quickly. So that though is enough. This is a nice healthy plant and that amount of roots right there is enough uh, it, it, to, to go through the winter and do just fine. So what I would have done because it's sitting on bottom heat, if I was and I'm probably going to do is turn that bottom heat off, but leave them all on there and just let them start getting cooler and acclimating. And then just let them sit in this tote right here. That's all I do. Let them sit in the tote through the winter and they take off like crazy in the spring and put on tons more roots. Now, because I washed all the soil out of that with cold water and we're in winter, it doesn't really have a good chance to reestablish very well. We'll see if it you know, we'll see what happens. You know, I'll show you a video next spring of whether or not this guy makes it, but I don't want to disturb all the rest of these because I want to give them as good a chance as possible. Um, so what I'm going to do here, like I said, don't get mad at me, guys. This is for you. Let me grab a little uh, stick here. All right, so what I'm going to do is just kind of, usually I just shove rooted cut, or uh, not rooted cuttings, but cuttings down in there on their own but because this guy has little roots I don't want to I don't want to hurt it too bad so we'll just take all them roots isn't that cool isn't that just a cool picture love all those roots anyway we'll just take them and we'll set them right down in there and we'll just gently kinda I wanna get all that soil worked back into those roots and this is going to disturb it. This is going to, this guy is angry at me. He's not real happy. But uh, we'll see what happens. I think what I'm going to do now with this guy is I'm going to set it right back down in the tote. And we're going to put it right over here on the heating mat. And then we're going to leave the heat on a little bit longer and see if we can't get those roots to just kind of do a little bit more and get it get stuck into that soil again before winter and then I'll turn it off. Heck, you know, maybe I ought to just leave the heating mat on all winter. I don't know. I'll let you guys know what I end up doing, but uh, we did it. We preserved the hydrangea. All right, guys, once again, thanks for hanging with me. This one was a lot of fun. I love these hydrangeas. They're fun to root. They're fun to take cuttings of. Um, and... Uh, 
you know, I hope you guys have an awesome week. I hope that uh, you're having fun kind of head into fall. I know that it's not a lot of plant propagation going on, but, uh, you know, it's, it's nice getting into that cooler weather and headed into the fall time. I, I love the color changes of all the leaves on the trees around here. Even the rhododendrons are starting to change some colors on the bottom leaves and drop them, and it's kind of a neat thing going on there. But uh, if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe if you want to follow along. You know, we'll go through the winter. Next spring, we'll be just firing on all cylinders, doing tons of plant propagation. So, like I said before, have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.